hello and welcome. This time, not to a, a Spider-Man 101 class, but to a Spider-Man 102 class. Yes, it's time for the continuation. This time, it's Venom 102. Enjoy. Oh yeah, it's back in black. Now, we're going to start this review basically from where we finish with our Carnage 101. Venom was caught again by Spider-Man, and there he is in confinement once again. So we're going to go through the next part of this very quickly. Venom, in Amazing Spider-Man 374 and 375, goes for revenge one last time with Spidey. What happens at the end of this story arc, in issue 375, is that Spider-Man saves Eddie Brock's ex-wife from dying, basically. He saves her from death. For that, Eddie Brock and the symbiote Venom decide that they will no longer pursue Spider-Man in order to show him gratitude, but basically, stay out of our way, we'll stay out of yours. So at the end of 375, a new form of Eddie Brock and Venom is born, which leads into his actually his first miniseries, which is Venom, Lethal Protector. Venom goes from being... A villain to the anti-hero. Now, Venom will have several different mini, uh, mini series, if you will. He'll go from Lethal Protector, he'll have the Madness, he'll have Funeral Pyre here, I guess starring the Punisher. He'll go on to do many, many of these things. And one of the coolest covers right here is from uh, yeah, The Enemy Within. This one actually glows in the dark. Very cool. So, Venom is the anti-hero now. Now, does he still dislike Spider-Man? Yes. But does he tolerate Spider-Man? Yes. Does Spider-Man tolerate him? Yes. They still do have their tiffs, but Venom, like I said, is more of an anti-hero at this point. Which, by the way, Venom worked far better as a villain as he did an anti-hero. But anyway, that's another story. Now... We'll fast forward here. This is in the mid-90s. Venom had all kinds of incarnations. Um, if you will, right here in the mid-90s or in the Clone Saga, the actual first person that Scarlet Spider fought was Venom. What happens, and this is where things start getting uh, actually a little interesting, is a miniseries which is called Marvel Knights. Marvel Knights is a long storyline, but it's a great storyline. And what it involves is Norman Osborn is basically in jail, and he has Aunt May kidnapped. And he's working with Max Gargan, which is known as a scorpion. Max Gargan is basically Green Goblin, a.k.a. Norman Osborn's little puppet. And so while Green Goblin is in jail, he's developing new costumes, new powers for all the villains. And he basically tells Spider-Man, this is your job. Um, you're going to listen to what we say, do what we say, and you're going to help me break out of prison, help Norman get out of prison, or we're going to kill Aunt May, which is missing. So Spider-Man painfully accepts to break him out along with a black hat. And needless to say, when they do break him up, Norman, what do you know, he turns evil and basically says, ha ha, you got me out and I'm going to kill you type thing. Usual, typical Green Goblin style. But what's interesting is that in this storyline, in the first, actually issues five through eight, if you will, the storyline is called Venomous. The mini sub storyline, I should say. And what this involves is actually Eddie Brock discovers that he has cancer. And basically, the suit's been keeping him alive. So Brock decides that since he's refound his religious beliefs, that he is going to auction off the suit and put all the monies towards charity. So what Brock does, he first appears in number five. In Marvel Knights number six, he actually auctions off the suit. The winner of the suit is a big crime boss who wants to get it for his son because his son's a puny little tight mobster that never really did anything and he wants his son to be big. So he buys it for a hundred million dollars. That's the price that the Yellen Symbiote goes for. In number seven, 
we see this new crime boss's son, which his name is Angelo Fortunato. He merges with the symbiote for the first time and attacks Peter Parker at one of his high school graduations. And in number eight, which is the last part of the Venom storyline, well, the Venom is sub-storyline, Spider-Man and Venom fight. And naturally, Venom, this Angelo kid, isn't really as cool and tough as Brock, so he wants to retreat. The symbiote gets mad at him, basically pissed off. Angelo jumps over a rooftop to try to get away from Spider-Man. The symbiote says, you know what you're lacking, Angelo? You're lacking a little more Venom. And the suit rips off Angelo, so Angelo is left in the middle of the alleyway in the air. The suit takes off and says, I'm going to go find a new host. Angelo drops down, shh, plop, dead. So Angelo dies and the symbiote is on its own trying to find a new host. We learn in issue 9 who the new host is. The symbiote follows and finds, what do you know, Max Gargan. One of the main players of this whole storyline, Mr. Scorpion. Finds him, merges with him, and by issue 11, you're going to see the Max Gargan version of Venom for the first time. Now, during this time, Eddie Brock, which has relinquished a symbiote, tries to commit suicide, tries to slash his wrists, and so actually what happens next is since Eddie Brock no longer has a symbiote, he's now in a coma in a, coma in a hospital, and that's where he's been ever since since about 2004. Let's fast forward to today. We know he's still in that comatose state. We also know that the Max Gargan version of Venom is now working for Thunderbolts under Norman Osborn. It's been confirmed by one of the editors at Marvel Comics, as I already knew and everybody supposed it was going to happen eventually before the movie. The symbiote will rebond to Barack, to Eddie Brock, before the movie comes out. No Spider-Man has gone back to black, and that's what's going to be happening. So basically, Venom went from a villain to an anti-hero. Brock sold the suit, went into a coma. The suit found Gargan eventually. The former Scorpion is now the new Venom. He's evil, but tamed, because he's working for Thunderbolts, which is all under the new Civil War Registration Act. But what will happen in the next few months is that the suit will leave our dear Mr. Gargan, and it'll join Venom. Well, Eddie Brock. Will Venom be good? Will Venom be bad? We don't know what kind of role he's going to play. I hope he's as bad as he ever was, because the anti-hero Venom is nice, but I like to see the old Todd McFarlane-esque Venom of my generation. So, until next time, keep subscribing to my videos. Keep watching those Spider-Man 3 trailers and spots. Keep looking out to your comic stores for the friendly neighborhood and sensational Spider-Man issues. And the amazing Spider-Man issues. And please post a comment, uh, leave feedback, anything you want. Thanks guys. Later.